Zoom or Facebook or watching this recording later, and to the communion moment later in the service. Everyone is invited to be part of communion, whether you are here in person or at home, because God is not limited by time or space. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you're at home, I invite you to prepare for that by having a piece of bread, something to drink, whatever elements you want to use for communion. And we're also going to be, have the opportunity during the sermon to write something down on a small piece of paper, if you wish, completely optional, of course. So if you're at home and you want to get a piece of paper and something to write with, in case you'd like to participate in that, that too is something God can bless you with, whether you are in person or not, or watching the service later. So I believe God sent each and every one of us a personalized invitation, one way or another, to join in worship today. I'm glad that you received it, and that you answered yes, and that you're with us today. So no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, or whom you love, you are welcome here. Not just by covenant, but more importantly, by God. Because God is excited to have you here. You are God's child. You have God's attention. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. So let us begin in worship. We have two opening songs, one being Gentle Shepherd, because we do need God's strength. God doesn't expect us to make it on our own. We need strength from God, because God, there's no other one we can turn to to help us in the way that God can and the way that God will. And then, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. That will be important in the sermon later. So let's join and sing. <laughs> Great I am, 
creator of us all, giver of life, source of love. Help us to be present with you this morning. Help us to let go of regrets about the past and worries about the future so we can be here with you and each other this morning. Help us to experience your love, your mercy, and your grace in our minds and our bodies and our hearts. Open our minds and our ears so that we can hear your word this morning and allow it to speak to us. Open our eyes and free our minds this morning so that we can understand what your will is for us and give us the strength and the ability to follow your will and to follow Jesus as you would have us do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> So we're going to do the covenant affirmation, which is one of the beautiful parts of the service, and then we may come back to it during the sermon, because it's very relevant. We are the people of God who live as a people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it so in our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. I celebrate God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I accept God's Spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me to be a witness of the Gospel, offering hope showing faithfulness, sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Now our time of announcements. <clears throat> These are on the back of the bulletin. Board applications are now available to serve as a volunteer member of the Board of Directors, and the applications are on the table in the foyer by the door where you came in. We have life lessons this Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom and live stream. You can always go to our website, covenantbirmingham.org, and access that. The instructions for how to log in are there. And this week is Vital Connections, the Path to Better Relationship. You do not have to have been present for previous lessons to benefit from this lesson. On Sunday mornings, we have Lighthouse here you can participate in person or via Zoom. And again, the instructions are on our website. And we're studying the book of Acts. And again, you don't have to have already read the book of Acts. You don't have to have been pre present for previous lessons to benefit from whatever lesson you can participate. We have the food pantry for the houseless and the blessing box, items for people and pets in the lobby. And for birthdays this month, we have Pam Heron, on September 9th. So happy birthday to her and people born in September. Are there any other announcements that were not in the bulletin? We now have a special time in our service where we bring to God our thanksgivings for the blessings God has given us, and our prayer requests, our needs that we present to God either out loud or in the prayer book in the lobby or in our hearts. So we have two different songs. The first one is, O Tender Mother, emphasizing that God is not limited to male or female, so we may address God as multiple labels. Some people really enjoy the analogy of God as being a mother. To hear our prayer as we gather, we offer you sometimes wounded souls for healing. That's what the sermon is about. For your caress can make us whole. Then at the end of the prayer, we'll sing, give them all to Jesus. Our shattered dreams, our wounded hearts, our broken toys, because Jesus can turn sorrows into joys. Amen? Amen. And we may come back to that chorus at the end of the sermon, or near the end of the sermon as well. Kind of all fits together really well. So let's start with O Tender.
niece, Sharon, had a successful heart surgery and recovery is going well. Cousins, Sonia and Ray, well, Ray, Roy actually, came home from the hospital and are doing better. Tammy and Jennifer are now negative for COVID, so we just pray for any lingering effects they may have. So yes, Thanksgivings for those things. Are there any other Thanksgivings that we need to add? Do anyone have any that you want to share that we're not on the list? For prayer requests, Linda Wiest and Ty have COVID, and Linda also asks for guidance on a new work opportunity. Jeff Watwood asks for continued prayers for treatment of stomach issues, and great niece Mary is pregnant, but the baby has severe complications that makes viability improbable. So we lift them up for God's touch. Judy Han Truitt's oldest friend, Linda Miller, has Alzheimer's disease. And Pastor JR's cousin, Sonia, whom we've been praying for, is now in heaven. So we pray for that family, that God will hold them close, and all of these, that God will hold you and all of these people close to the divine heart, the healing heart and the loving heart. Are there any other prayers, any names that you want to lift up this morning? One of the scriptures in the lectionary is Psalm 139. I won't read it all, but some of it says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. If you have a prayer that you is, is private, or maybe even a prayer that you don't really have words for, raise your hand if you'd like for God to recognize that you offer that prayer. God, you know us better than we know ourselves. You made us, and we are wonderful because you made us. Our needs, our concerns, our cares are important to you because of that loving and healing heart that you have, your loving and healing hands with which you touch us. We thank you for the blessings you've already given, we could not name them all. We're not even aware of them all because you bless us all the time. And God, we bring to you our needs, our hurts, our wounds, our sickness, our life challenges, employment concerns, requests for guidance, even some prayers that we may not have words for, unspoken prayers. You know what they are, God. You know what we need most. And because you love us, <clears throat> you answer all of our prayers. It may not be the answer that we would choose, but we trust in your love. We've made it this far by faith, God. You've sustained us. You've gotten us to this point. And we know you didn't bring us to this point to leave because your word tells us you never leave us or abandon us. So, God, we trust you with these prayers. Not only these, God, but for prayers around the whole world. Not just this church, but your universal church around the world. We lift up our city, our state, our nation, and our world, especially areas experiencing war. We lift up those in prison and all those suffering any kind of injustice. We pray that you will continue to guide, to offer your healing hand to us. So God, we leave all these prayers with you, knowing that you treasure each one, each desire, each joy, and each tear. 
because we are precious to you, God. So we lift all these prayers in the name of Jesus. making healing an everyday ritual. And here at Covenant, I can honestly say that we not only teach it, but we practice it for all concepts of healings that are pleasing to God. We're here to say thank you, thank you, and thank you for all of your support, whether it be financial, your time, or your talents, because we know that it takes all of these gifts to be an avenue to do God's will to provide healing to our congregation and throughout our community. There are several ways to give securely, as you can see on the screen or on our webpage. If you are here in person today, you can place your support in the offering plate. Luke is my inspiration for our offertory prayer today. And let us pray. Holy and righteous God, through your Son, you have called us to follow. The gifts we offer this day are only a token of affirmation that we accept that calling for healing. When we embrace the full meaning of that call, we faithfully give our whole being to the offering as much as we can. We pray that we are allowed to believe in the financial cost of discipleship, and that means something that is capable of transforming the world through your healing. By your grace and with the help of Jesus, helping hands and the love of God, we pray, amen.
please rise in spirit and stand as you are able for the reading of God's word. <clears throat> uh, the first reading is uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 6, and I'm reading from the uh, New International Version. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. Second reading is from Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life. Such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the other one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciples. This is the word of God. I'll go ahead and add a little bit to what that beautiful song said. It was even more fitting than I remember. So I thank them for that. And Jennifer and Tammy, Carol, Dodd, Chris, everyone who helps the church service happen. Probably more people than that, but thank you to everyone who helps the service. Mary, for example. For everyone who has a part in any part. And welcome again. Some people may have just joined us in person or on Zoom or on Facebook. So again, everyone is welcome. You're here by a special invitation from God, and I hope that it's something that's a benefit. And I hope that my words add something to it. 
Again, later on, we'll have communion. So those at home, if you want to participate, you certainly can. You can get something to use for communion, such as bread or juice or both. And we'll have a moment in the sermon where you can write something down if you choose. So if you're at home, you might get a piece of paper and something to write with in case it's helpful to you to do so. Let's begin with prayer. God, again, we ask you to help us set aside distractions and give this time to you, to your word, and to what you might have to touch our hearts with healing and love today. I ask you if you can use my words to do so, that they might bring people hope and healing, that they might be the words that your will directs. We thank you for being an unconditionally loving giving us your word, your instruction, and all those things that were in the song, the peace, the deliverance, the healing, the hope, the joy, the love, all those blessings that come from you. We pray that you will continue to give them to us and that we will continue to give them to others because we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. The potter's house is a house of healing and love from the healing heart and hands of our loving God. It is a place in the space of healing and transformation. So I would say that we are in the potter's house right now wherever we are because God makes those things available whether we're here in church, in person, or at home. But the question is, are we really willing to do what one of the songs said earlier in the service, in the beginning, <clears throat> to allow the potter to mold us and shape us, to transform us, to use us, like the clay pot on the wheel. <clears throat> Are we concerned maybe about what that would be like? When we're going to go to a doctor or a surgeon for physical healing, we have concerns. Will it hurt? Will we be getting a shot? Do we need surgery? Can we afford it? What will it be like afterward? What will the healing be like? What will the recovery be like? <clears throat> so today I'm speaking about spiritual healing, though, not being a doctor or a nurse. I'm speaking about spiritual healing, and some of us may need spiritual surgery. So some people might ask themselves, will God really heal what I have to bring to God? Does God really understand it? Does God know about it? And that's why I was reading some of Psalm 139. God created us. God knows everything about us. But can I really receive God's healing? Is God really aware of me? Am I really important to God? Can I really connect with God? Am I good enough? Have I confessed enough? Have I merited it? Some of those things that some other churches may have incorrectly taught us that we need. I know for a fact, I believe for a fact, that you can receive God's healing if you're willing. <clears throat> I know for a fact that you will be okay, one way or another. So I can explain why. First of all, God's Word says so. God's Word says that God loves you. If you're not sure about God's love, you can ask Sean to preach to you. <laughs> and she'll preach to you in another song, right? Jesus Loves Me. She's really good at that one. But there's another reason why I know God can reach you and is willing to heal you. And that you can find God's healing. No matter what your place is, your history, your background, your spirituality, your religion, your past, or your present. I've been reading a book lately, and I don't know if... God led me to the book because God knew about this scripture and this sermon. But it's called, The Sun Does Shine. Anybody read that? Well, good. I'm not going to tell you all of it because I hope that you read it. It's written by Anthony Ray Hinton. Does anybody remember who Anthony Ray Hinton is? Some of us know. Some of us remember. 
some of us went and watched a movie together that talked a little bit about him. The book talks, the book gives a whole lot more detail than the movie because the movie, Anthony Ray Hinton was a part, his story was a part of the movie, as well as many other stories. But this book is specifically about <coughs> Anthony Ray Hinton. So, Anthony Ray Hinton was accused of a crime that he did not commit, and I know I'm convinced of that, and if you read the book, you'll understand why. I won't go through all the many reasons why he could not possibly have done the crime you know, that, that they accused him of. Okay, so he was in a locked warehouse for one thing at the time. It was just one thing. <clears throat> and he was checked in and all that. He was working there, and they weren't allowed to leave. But, he was accused of a crime he didn't commit, and he went to, and the arresting officers told him, you know, it doesn't really matter if you committed it or not, one of y'all did, and you're the one that's going to take the blame. Um, so he knew that all along. Of course, didn't believe it was really going to happen, he just thought it was a nightmare, but he ended up on death row in Alabama, and he stayed on death row for 30, 30 years, not 13, 30 years. So he was on death row in Alabama, and uh, death row was a pretty bad place. The book goes into great detail about it. I won't go into great detail about it, but again, I encourage you to read it. And so, you know, Anthony Ray Henson was in a really dark place for about, not, I mean, not literally it was dark to a big extent, but spiritually. He was in a dark place for about three years. Even though his mother had raised him to believe in God and trust God and trust people and love people, which he did, being there, especially for something you didn't do in a justice system that was an injustice system in his case, he was in a pretty spiritually dark place. Um, you know, the, the questions you would expect, how could, if God loves me, how could this happen? And so on, very normal questions that God can handle, by the way. But he found God there. Now, he knew about God from his childhood and his upbringing, but he found God on a more adult, deeper level, on death row, in prison, in Alabama. And his story is very touching. And I think, I don't think, I know, that if God can reach someone in death row, in prison, who's there for 30 years, of course he had doubts, you know, sometimes he was close to God, sometimes not so much. But over the course of 30 years, not only did he find closeness with God, not only did he find ways to spiritually hang on, God even was able to use him to touch other people and lead other people and help them realize forgiveness and help them realize that, yes, God is still real. God can still reach you even here. You know, it was sort of like hell on earth, but God was still present. So I believe that if Anthony Ray Hinton can be on death row in a 5 by 7 cell for most of 30 years, I mean, some, some parts of some days he was able to leave the cell, but for most of that time he was in that 5 by 7 space. No air conditioning, by the way, no fans. In the morning. If he was okay, and eventually, and, and by the way, he even came to a place of peace with God and with life and with people where if he had had to go to the electric chair or when they switched to lethal injection, if he had had to do that, he was even more or less at peace with that. Not that it was okay, but he was okay with God. He was okay with himself. He was okay with the other people around there. He didn't have hate in his heart for anyone. Not the prosecutors, not the judge, as terrible as they were. He was in prison on death row with a man that he found out. He sort of uh, got to be a little bit friends with the man in prison. And then after he had met him and had kind of gotten to be a little friendly with him, he realized that this man, Anthony, Anthony Ray Hinton was black, by the way. That's not apparent. This white man that he knew on death row was on death row because he had committed a mention of a young white because of it. But Anthony Ray Hinton didn't even have hate for that man. For that. that man came to admit 
that he was raised by the KKK and was taught a lot of untruths that he believed that his parents told him. And that man's dad, who was a very big part of the KKK, came to visit him. And at that time, this man and Anthony Ray Hinton were both in the visitation room visiting with their families. And this man gets up and calls Anthony, well, I guess he couldn't get up. He called Anthony Ray Hinton to come over to him. Anthony Ray Hinton had such a good record. Sometimes the guards would let him have privileges that they weren't supposed to. So they let him come over. And this white man who had committed a lynching said, Dad, this is my best friend, great big tall black man. That's obviously the presence of God working. And so if God can reach someone who committed murder and have that man be remorseful and confessing that sin to God, calling Anthony Ray Kenton his best friend, when that man, because he was put to death, was getting ready to go to the chamber, he told Anthony Ray Hinton, I love you. So if God can reach Anthony and God can reach that man, whose name I don't remember, in death row, God can reach you here, amen? God can reach you anywhere, amen? God can heal them. There's no reason to think God can't heal you or would it? And just a footnote to the Anthony Ray Hinton story, you know, sometimes I forget how modern those things are. You know, when I hear stories like that, I think, oh, that must have happened in the 50s or the you know, early 60s, you know. That trial happened in Jefferson County in the 1980s. 1980s. And he was set free. The state and the county finally dropped the charges I don't know if I'm going to get this right. It was either 2013, 2015, something like that. Less than 10 years ago, he was finally able to be free. So, if God can touch his heart, God can touch all of us, obviously. So back to the question, are you willing? Because there may be a cost. Just like physical healing, spiritual healing can hurt in some way. There may be a cost like physical therapy has a cost, you know, pain now to have more healing later. Sometimes it's hard. Spiritual recovery, spiritual surgery can be difficult too because we need to let God take over. And that's hard for many of us in many ways. Some healing can be defeated too. You know, you can be physically healed from something but then go back and do unhealthy things that cause you to suffer again. You know, you can choose not to make whatever improvements the doctor says you need to make. And we can choose not to make whatever improvements Dr. Jesus recommends as well. We need spiritual healing for many things. It could be an issue from the past. It could be something in the present. It could be a sin. It could be something that God helped you with. But then you or I kind of went back to the old habit. We all do sometimes. There may be an unforeseen cost. Jesus spoke about that in the Gospel of Carol Ray, speaking in exaggerated terms, kind of like when I was preaching recently. It's kind of odd for a Jesus who's all about love to say, hate father or mother. But there are sometimes there are things that we have to be willing to give up. In this day and time, we're not usually asked to give up our life to follow Jesus. But there could be a cost in family. There could be a cost in friendships. There could be costs in many ways. If God heals your spirit from inside out, you may change some. You may care about some people or th certain things a lot more. In some cases, less if they're not helpful, if they don't want to be part of God's plan. You will love more if God heals you from the inside out. You will forgive more. Are we ready for that one? Some people around you, family, friends, co-workers, whoever, may not like that. If God healed you from the inside out, you're going to be less judgmental about whom you love and who you forgive. And we can all use God's healing on that. If God heals your spirit from the inside out, you'll become more Christ-like. 
Not everyone in your life may approve of that. You may adopt some new habits and drop some old ones, maybe not caring as much about worldly things. The question for each of us is, are you and I willing to let those things happen? Because God doesn't take prisoners. The potter doesn't force people into the healing house, like a potter might carry a pot. In. The potter waits for us to come to the house. The potter waits for us to genuinely ask for it and genuinely desire, genuinely desire it, knowing that we can only do what our maturity level allows. It's not saying God rejects us if we're not 100%, but God can do more, God can heal more if we're willing to give 100%, if we're willing to put it all on the altar, as the old song says. Jesus said, anyone who's not willing to give up everything cannot be his disciple. And I think that means that if you don't give, if you're not willing to give up anything that you may need to give up, let's say you want to give up 80%, then Jesus can only use 80%. And Jesus can do something with that 80%. That's worthwhile. But if we don't give Jesus 100%, then Jesus can't heal 100%. So, will you and I be healed? This is the potter's house. Amen. The potter, the shepherd, our tender mother is here. Amen. The spirit of the living God is here. And in the bulletin, a while ago, you said, I am a child of God, right? So let's go back to the covenant affirmation for a moment. That's so fitting for asking God for healing. I want to look at the first six words. And I want you to say them with me, if you're willing to, three times. Ready? I am a child of God. I am a child of God. And I am a child of God. So there's no doubt that God is willing to heal whatever you're willing for God to do. If you accept God's Spirit in your life, you accept God's Spirit and power to inspire you, guide you, and motivate you, this would be a good thing to take home and read and pray every day. Just hit me right there. To be a witness of the Gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, sharing joy, because if you do that not just on Sunday, but on Monday, and I, talking to myself too, do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, then that allows God to bring us healing seven days instead of just one. Didn't plan to say that. So you qualify. So what I invite you to do if you choose is to take out the purple piece of paper, and I have a few more up here. You certainly don't need to do this to be healed, but for some people it's helpful. I don't want you to put a name on it, but I suggest that you write on there something or multiple things that you need healing for. What is it that you need healing for from God? And I'm going to invite you to lift that prayer in your heart to God in the human. I suggest that you write it down because for a lot of people, writing it down is powerful. And you don't have to put detail. God knows what it means. Writing it down can be really powerful. It could be something that you put back in your pocket and continue to pray about later. It could be something that after you give it to God, you rip it up in a bunch of pieces and throw it away. It could be something you safely and carefully burn as an offering to God, especially if you feel like it's healed. It could be something, if you are a journal person, you could put it in your prayer journal and journal about it and write about what did God do with that. When you ask for healing, watch for what God's going to do with that that you've given I have some more up here. Can you, I missed one and didn't give one to anybody. And if you're at home, you can write it down at home. I want to go back to the prayer response, the second one. 
Because what I'm inviting you to do, and what I think God is inviting you to do, is to give them all, all these needs for healing, whether it is something that you are confessing to God, whether it's something that you are giving to God to take over and direct, whether it's something that you feel God helped you with and maybe you need help with it again, which many of us do throughout life, whether it's someone to forgive, whether it's someone that you're asking for God to help you reach out to, something that you can do over or wish you could do over, any of that, whatever you need healing for. Shattered dreams, wounded hearts, broken toys. I invite you to give them all to Jesus. So we're going to sing that a couple of times just as a way to meditate for a moment. To give you a chance just in your heart wherever you're sitting, to give those things, whether you wrote them down or not, to give those things to God. ready to give that up to God, I invite you to ask God to help you work toward 100%. Sometimes it's a journey, and God is there with us every step of the journey. In the scripture, Jesus talked about if we were going to go to battle, if we were a king going to battle, we would think about the cost. Can this be won? Can this work? if we're building a house, whatever it is, whatever our plan is. In this one, this is one where you, you, you may naturally think about that, and can I really let go of this, what will happen? I invite you to just give that to God too. God, I, if, just if you desire to let it go, just that desire is something God can help. And you can ask God to help you to trust that God knows better than you do, and that God will take care of you the way God always has. I want to offer anointing, but since it's a COVID era, uh, I'm not going to ask you to come up. God doesn't have to, have to actually have me touch you to anoint you, because God can anoint any time any place. I invite you to consider the piece of paper that you wrote on, if you did write, or just whatever it was you had in your heart, or still have in your heart, that you are offering to God. And I want you to know that God accepts whatever it is that you offer. And I want you to know that God will anoint that and bless that. Whatever you give to God, God will bless. Amen. So I just want to offer anointing over whatever it is that you and God are doing right now. What it, however God is, is touching you, I want to anoint that moment and that space in your journey as something special, 
that you can look back on and know that today I asked God to help with this. And either in a journal or just in your own thoughts, I encourage you to watch for what God's going to do with what you offer. So whatever your journey with God is right now, I prayerfully ask God to touch. I prayerfully ask God to bring about that healing that God promises, that by coming to the Potter's house today and offering whatever your need is, whatever your wound, woundedness, whatever your weakness, whatever it is that you and I have to bring, we come as we are. And I ask God to anoint that moment and provide that healing in the name of the Sovereign and the Savior and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So, what I believe God's going to do, because that's one of the prayers God always answers, the prayer for healing, it's not always the healing that we pray for. We, I mentioned in the prayer, you know, someone in Jared's family that passed away. That may not have been the healing they were hoping for, but it's still healing on the other side. Sometimes God doesn't heal the way we might think we need. But God will bring about something beautiful and something good. Even if you're still confused about whatever it is, God can help you through the confusion. Because Psalm 139 says, darkness is not dark to God. To God, it's clear. God knows the destination. God knows what the divine dream is for a relationship with you. <clears throat> God understands. So you may be offering brokenness. You and I may be offering some strife to God that may not be resolved completely 100% today. Sometimes it's just the first step on a journey. But God will make something beautiful out of it. There are a lot of stories in this room and in Zoom and in Facebook right now of things God has made beautiful, but at one time people thought there's no way. This is it. It's over. Um, you know, there were a lot of times when Anthony Ray Hinton thought it was over. But now he's writing his published book. So God can do amazing things. And I invite you to stand. thank God for healing. And one thing that Jesus left us to remind us of healing, to remind us of his presence in our life, even though he's not physically on the earth in human form as Jesus, is the gift of communion. At the Last Supper, and if you don't have one, we have some more on the podium, by the way. If you're at home, you can get your elements together. And you can peel off that little plastic if you're here, if you want to get that ready. 
At the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread, lifted it up to heaven, gave thanks, blessed it, and broke it, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you and for all. This is for healing and given with love, so let us eat. And he took the cup and blessed it, gave thanks, and passed it to each of them, saying, This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant given for you and for all. And this too was given for healing, given with love. So let us drink. God, thank you for this reminder of the incredible love and the incredible healing that was brought about by the life and the sacrifice of Jesus, who showed us what it meant to give everything. Help us to give to you and to others that your message of healing and love may be spread. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In closing, we have this. Let me turn out to that one. My prayer is that you will take the healing that you've received and share it with others, as Anthony Ray Hinton does, by telling your story. Whatever God has done for you is something that only you can tell and you can bless other people with. So I pray that when you go out into the mission field outside these doors this week, that you will take the light of Jesus with you and the light of healing, the love from God's heart with you, and that other people might see because of you, in a way that only you can tell, that God's love is for them as well. Amen? So we have a song of celebration. Let's stand and sing. moments if anyone needs to talk personally or ask for prayer for God's healing. Um, otherwise, I pray that you have a good week and take the healing and the joy and everything that the Potter's House provides to other people. Go with God. Amen.